today, Missouri launches an investigation into a children's gender transition center after a whistleblower comes forward on the horrific details of what is going on inside. Red states fight back against the federal government infringing on the Second Amendment and the left attempts to allow illegal immigrants to vote. But that was just a conspiracy theory. No, it's actually happening. We've got all of that and more coming up, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez, and I am going to try to get through this episode uh, without my voice giving out. It's been a really long week, apparently, and I guess I've yelled at too many people. I'm joined today by Jakub Buyans, Blaze TV contributor and host of The Bottom Line, Alex Stein, Blaze TV host of Primetime with Alex Stein, and Blaze TV contributor John Doyle, also host of Heck Off Commie. Did you just wave at the camera? Yeah. I'm happy to be here. Because you, you felt like you needed to do something after Alex yeah, of does course. this. I'm very yeah. susceptible to peer pressure. <laughs> I, I'm not an independent thinker. Monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. Yeah. You look good, though. Yeah, Thank he you. looks nice. You do. Jacket. You look yeah, very you look dapper. Nice. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yesterday, he was like, I didn't dress up for you. I dressed up for Gavin. Well, and I didn't even dress up. I just had a collared shirt. But Gavin is like one of these truly larger-than-life figures where you could see like a silhouette and know that's him. I mean, he's always got the suit, the beard, you know, the uh, the wayfarers. <laughs> like, that guy just has a look about him. Yeah. And, you know, Alex has one. But, Yako, I, one of these days, I'll have to figure out what mine is. But yeah. Gavin's look is awesome, though. I mean, I mean we're <laughs> yeah. just sitting here about looks. All right, all right, all right, already. He's got the, he's got the vibes. I don't know. He's got, a, he's got good vibes. Okay, so I want to get into this, uh, this top story here, and it's going to take take me a little bit of time to lay this out, but I think that these are all very important details of the story that I want to get um, get out there. I feel like this should come as a, a no-brainer here, but I would not have any small children in um, around the, te the television while you're listening to this because Sarah, there are some I have very to cut graphic you off. details. You say you can't watch my show in front of your kids, and no. then I say you can't watch yours either. You have, I know. To, make, you have to make this warning every show. I, Sorry. No, literally, <laughs> I, my children do not watch the news. Yeah. We do not have the news on Any around news. my children. Yeah. Any, Any news. news. Any news. You yeah. cannot. You there's cannot. there's too many bad things going on in the world, yeah. but, I mean, that is a good point. My children <laughs> also don't watch my show. Yeah, so. I know. But I just teasing you about that. <laughs> um, so, all right, Missouri's Attorney General has launched a multi-agency investigation into the Pediatric Transgender Center at St. Louis Children's Hospital after a whistleblower alleged that the facility's practices are seriously harming children. Um, I just want to set the stage here for who this whistleblower is. Her name is Jamie Reed. She is a self-described queer leftist woman. She is married to what she calls a transgender man, so another woman. They, she has uh, children from a previous marriage. They're looking to adopt two more as this queer, trans couple or whatever, and she describes herself as more progressive than Bernie Sanders, okay? So this is not a conservative that we're dealing with. This is not even, I would argue, I mean, God bless her for what she's doing here, but I would argue, like, the, she is way out in left field, mm -hmm. and she still, uh, the details of, of her, her account of what's going on in there are just really, really gruesome. So in this affidavit uh, that she presented, some of the most explosive claims uh, she said, on several occasions, the doctors have continued prescribing medical transition even when a parent stated that they were revoking consent. Mm. She said, I have seen puberty blockers worsen the mental health outcomes of children. Children who have not contemplated suicide before being put on puberty blockers have Sorry. attempted suicide after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you about that, do they? Uh, during my time at the center, I personally witnessed center healthcare providers lie to the public and to the parents of patients about the treatment or lack of treatment and the effects of treatment provided to children at the center. Doctors at the center have also publicly claimed that they do not do any gender transition surgeries on minors. This was a lie. The center regularly refers minors for gender transition surgery. The center routinely gives out the names and contact information of surgeons to those under the age of 18. At least one gender, tra gender transition surgery was performed by Dr. Allison Snyder Warwick at St. Louis Children's Hospital in the last few years. Uh, let's see. 
Children come into the clinic using pronouns of inanimate objects like mushroom, rock, or helicopter. Children come into the clinic saying they want hormones because they do not want to be gay. Children come in changing their identities on a day-to-day -day basis. Children come in under clear pressure by a parent to identify in a way inconsistent with the child's actual identity. In all these cases, the doctors decide to issue puberty blockers or cross-sex hormones. And it gets worse. On another occasion, a patient had their breasts removed. This surgery was performed at St. Louis Children's Hospital. Three months later, the patient contacted the surgeon and asked for their breasts to be put back on. Mm. Had a requisite and adequate assessment been performed before the procedure, the doctors could have prevented this patient from undergoing irreversible surgical change. I'm not done. This one is a really difficult one for me to, uh, to, to cover here. A call we received at the center in 2020 from a 17-year-old biological female patient who was on testosterone. She said she was bleeding from the vagina. In less than an hour, she had soaked through a heavy pad, her jeans, and the towel she had wrapped around her waist. The nurse said, go to the emergency room right away. We found out later that this girl had had intercourse, and because testosterone thins vaginal tissues, her vaginal canal had been ripped open. Mm. Yeah. yeah. She had to be sedated and given surgery to repair the damage. She wasn't the only vaginal laceration case we heard about. Mm. Other girls were disturbed by the effects of testosterone on their clitoris, which enlarges and grows into what looks like a microphallus or tiny penis. One of the girls was upset because it rubbed painfully in her jeans. And uh, Jamie said, I advised her to get the kind of compression undergarments worn by biological men who dress to pass as female. At the end of the call, I thought to myself, Wow, we hurt this kid. This is the truth of what is going on at all of these gender transition clinics for children all across the country. And thank God that this whistleblower came out and brought it to Missouri and, and now the AG is investigating it. I hope to God that this has the same recourse as in Tennessee uh, whenever the, the, the hospital in Nashville, um, all of that, Matt Walsh, did great work yep. exposing all of that, yep. and now there are, are changes taking place here. They're not going to do it anymore on kids. I mean, the surgeries, but they're still going to offer them all of these uh, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, things that these doctors know are harming children, but they don't care because it's all about the money. So last week I was on a phone call, and we had, from Missouri, about this, we had Representative Moon, who's a champion, thank you for your work. We had Landon Starbuck, Robbie Starbuck's wife, on, on this case. We had a panel of about 15, 20 people talking about this. And I want America to understand that parents are doing things to their children because when a, when a human being goes through sexual abuse, one of two things happen. You either decide that what happened to you is love, so now you are doing it to yourself, you perpetuate it, and you'll teach it to your child, or you decide that whatever, whether it's a male, they're evil, it's evil or this is love. And the parents that you're seeing taking their children for gender affirming care, mutilation, whatever, they are sick, sick members of society mm -hmm. who over 95% of them experienced abuse as a child. That does not disqualify their behavior now, but they're the ones who came into agreement that said, this is love. Now you have the love is love movement and man, blah, man, boy, love association. And it says, no, it's loving your child, forgiving them what's called sexual agency. These are sick human beings. Not 15 years ago would have been thrown in jail. Mm -hmm. if CPS would do their job, actually. So we are looking at a culture that is falling apart. And I'm, I'm asking, please, just do yourself a favor, March 23rd. Watch our new documentary, Sex Nation, coming out. And you're going to see who's truly responsible for this. It's self-legitimizing voices consistently citing one another, scholars within the medical community. They fast-track certain people's careers. When they identify a doctor that's willing to be radical, they fast-track him. They fast-track him into the head of the department in Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, Dallas Children's Hospital. So they have, over decades, fast-tracked the careers of the doctors that they've identified that when they call and say, go now, go now, cut off breath, that they will just line up and they're doing it. I want to bring in one other aspect of this because I don't disagree with you that many of these adults that are allowing this to happen to children are just completely sick. I think there's another part of it, though, that is in this clinic and in the case of Chloe Cole, 
Um, we're hearing that these doctors are getting these parents behind closed doors and they're telling these parents, if you do not affirm this, if you do not go along with this, your child will kill themselves. I'm sure that's happening a lot. Right. I'm sure that. And, and, so, and the parents did not. They revoked consent, right? And, right, also. right. Well, yeah. right. And, and so, ima but imagine being yeah. a parent who doesn't know much about this, doesn't study it, just wants their child to be happy. And imagine, imagine the emotional turmoil you would go through as a parent. Like, I, I don't agree with this, but I also want my child alive. Yeah. So I guess I have to, right? I mean, it's just the, the human rights abuses that are taking place in the medical community right now uh, is just mind-bogglingly high. Yeah, I just don't understand how when I was young, the smoking age was 18, and I believe it was like last year or two years ago, they changed it to 21. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you gotta be 21 to smoke a cigarette, but you can cut off your breasts at 14. I I'm just confused on why outlaw cigarettes? Uh, because they cause cancer because they're bad for your health, but yet a mastectomy is good for your health. I'm just, it's just very confusing for me, the way that the mental gymnastics that these parents go through to actually mutilate their their children's gender or their actual, uh, you know, body parts. I, I just, I would never do that. And for somebody to do that, it's um, a serious mental illness. Like the parent, I mean, the, the kid can have gender dysphoria because obviously you can transition at an older age, but this is by the parent's sickness. And oftentimes getting back at an ex-husband or uh, ex-wife. So there's just a very weird um, subculture behind this that is um, driven by, I think, the influence of parents. Well, and what I'm hearing, Alex, I think, just to kind of summarize, is there are so many adults who are failing these children. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Like, all oh, yeah. of these adults mm -hmm. involved are oh, yeah. all failing these oh, children. Yes. Yeah. All failing them. And the damage, Many of them will the die. The damage may never, never yeah. be restored. It's not just the physical damage, Sarah. Right. I know. We, we now know when you experience emotional trauma through sex, it's a three to one. So if your trauma was, you know, five months, it's 15 months of rehab. If your trauma was two, three years, okay, unattended trauma, some will never recover, never. Even if they could reattach the breast, the trauma, they do not recover. Mm -hmm. They have, they've broken, we've potentially broken a generation. Yeah. John. I think that's accurate. Uh, I said this yesterday on the show. My generation is probably the worst one to ever walk the earth. And I, I don't say that to be like, you know, uh, I'm like cool and like one of the right. non mad ones, but I mean, I mean so many though. of us, <laughs> thank you. So many of us are overweight. So many of us are like self uh, professed sexual deviants and, you know, we're just all miserable and anxiety ridden and depressed. And I don't know. I would like to make it kind of my mission in the next year or two to try to shoehorn the important part of this discussion into the broader right wing discussion because obviously we're never going to be able to solve a problem if we don't describe it accurately. In the same way that we're talking about now how there's no such thing as gender. I mean you don't have an identity that transcends your biological sex based mm -hmm. on how you feel. Frankly, the same is true for this idea of sexuality. I mean, you are a man or you are a woman. This idea that you can have some sort of subjective identity that transcends your biology is ridiculous. I mean, even if you look at it from a biological standpoint where you're this meat sack who only has an incentive to reproduce, like the evolutionary people would say, well, that doesn't really explain that. Or, of course, from a biblical perspective, that would obviously not explain it either. And all this stuff, because obviously this is like the worst thing that could possibly happen. So given that that's the case, we have to be comfortable with listening to all options. And what I mean by that is there is a vast psychological literature that people have been told is just crazy and wrong and backwards by the people who control education and control media. But if you actually read into it, it makes a lot of sense. So it was a very common talking point a few years ago for like Ben Shapiro, all these people to say, well, you know, transgenderism is actually a mental disorder. It's in the DSM. It was called, you know, gender dysphoria. Now it's gender identity yeah. disorder, maybe backwards. Homosexuality was the same thing. And all of the literature that disproved both of those things as pathologies wasn't actually real science. It was like, I think for the homosexuality one, they basically had people interpret ink blots, like Rorschach tests, and see if they could tell the difference between when gay people interpreted them versus straight people. And they're like, oh, I guess there's no difference. Must be the same thing. Same thing with gender dysphoria. And they brag about this because they know that they need to promote these woke doctors to get this stuff taken out as something that's classified mm -hmm. as wrong so they can march down the field. So until we're willing to have that conversation that, yeah, any deviant sexual identity is something that is abnormal and caused, as he correctly pointed out, by trauma or some sort of disordered development when they were a child, whether it's another masculine or feminine identity, we're just going to buy ourselves a little bit of time until we get back to this point again. John, 1950, Alfred Kinsey, Kinsey Institute, interviews only lesbian women who live with lesbian women, and he writes a manifesto that says their sexual preference is the normal sex mm -hmm. sexual preference of a heterosexual married female. 
This has been coming for a long time. Everything we know about sex is built upon the Kinsey Institute. And, and you can go, we, we have been, it, the blood is on our hands, guys. We have been stepping aside. You make such an amazing point. I met with the head of Philip Morris Public Relations. Philip Morris is now actually fighting human trafficking. And she told me, Yaku, yeah, do you know when cigarettes changed in this country? When the public cried out that you need to stop killing our youth mm -hmm. with ingesting tar and <clears throat> toxins. The public, John, is not fed up yet. Yeah. Uh, and which is really, really depressing because Concerned. that only means more children yes. have to suffer, yes. more children have to die, more children have to go to the hospital because they can't stop bleeding uh, until people finally wake up. But I gotta tell you, once they wake up, I am very hopeful that um, the justice system will uh, win out, we will have laws changed, and um, all of the people that uh, are responsible for doing this to children uh, receive the death penalty and are executed. I hope that I put what that, that uh, clearly enough. was that one movie about the cigarette executives? It was like... Uh, have thank you for smoking. Thank, thank you for smoking. smoking. Yes. It was like in Thank You for Smoking where they take the guy and they hold him down and they put like nicotine patches on him. him. We should like do that to all the people who perform these surgeries. Yes. Just like have it done to them have as well. Have it done well. to them. Yeah, well, and I want to make this, the doctors. I, I want to make yes. this point too. And you look at the assisted suicide that's happening in, in Canada and then it's happening in Europe. I believe these... The, and you know, this is conspiracy or whatever. It's like these kids, they want the kids to commit suicide basically. I mean, these doctors say, oh, we don't want them to commit suicide. But they don't care. Yeah, look, it, it's, it really bothers me the informed consent aspect too, because if you do not have informed consent, like you are not a free person. You do not have free will. You are not a free individual if you are not given informed yeah. consent and you know what all of the consequences, what all of the risks, what all of the benefits will be before you make any, any decision, not to mention a life altering one. It just really pisses me off. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break. When we come back, let's, we're going to kind of talk about the same thing, but let's talk about uh, a new state is going to pass a law restricting drag shows. Yay. First, I want to thank our sponsor, Cozy Earth. So, um, you know, you could do the flowers thing again this Valentine's Day, but they eventually dry up and then you got to throw them in the trash and that's no fun. Uh, so you could give something so incredibly thoughtful. The two of you will, or three of you, I don't know, maybe you have kids that jump in the bed with you, four or five. I don't know how many kids you have. You're, yeah, Yaku's like me. All my kids slept in the bed with me last night because my wife's on a, you know, she's traveling. Yeah. So I said, all the kids, it's slumber party time. Oh my gosh. So we okay, need you need this. We need this. These are legit the softest sheets that we have. And we eventually were like, we're just throwing all of our other sheets out because we love, we've been spoiled by Cozy Earth so much. They use only luxury materials, uh, including the uh, this, this premium uh, fabric made from highly sustainable bamboo, which I always say you wouldn't think would be really soft because it's wood, but somehow they do it. I don't know how, I don't need to know how. All I know is that I get a good night's sleep every time I sleep on my Cozy Earth sheets. You can go to, um, CozyEarth.com slash Y. Uh, enter my promo code Y at checkout and save 35%. That is CozyEarth.com slash Y. Enter my promo code Y at checkout. Uh, a new bill has made its way through the Tennessee Senate uh, yesterday. This is legislation that is designed to obviously restrict all ages drag shows. So how they're going to do it is uh, the words drag show are not explicitly stated, but the legislation is going to expand the definition of adult cabaret in Tennessee's law to include that such, quote, adult-oriented performances that are harmful to minors as defined in their obscenity law. Um, so then the legislation will ban adult cabaret from taking place on, on public property or in a location where minors might be present. We'll see what happens, but yeah. um, I more and more states are yeah, and that, finally. That bill is was heavily, you know, you know, when you read a bill, it'll say who sponsors the bill. Mm -hmm. Seldom the legislators are the ones writing the bill. It's normally the public, at the private sector, that writes the bills because the information and the and the, the expertise come. So the Starbucks, Robbie and Lennon did great work on that bill. And Tennessee, Tennessee is starting to do some really significant things. They really are, and uh, I'm saying. Wake up, Texas, because let me tell you, so our amazing. bill is our bill is currently going through committee, a committee in Texas to eradicate porn from all school curriculum, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, Austin's in trouble. Yeah. It's ugly, ugly on the House floor in Austin. They're not with us. They have an R behind their name, but they're not with us. The Senate is okay, but the House is a shambles. You know, 
I would just like to take the opportunity to say, Texas, get your crap together yes. because the last thing you want is to see me walking the halls of the Capitol, banging down your door. Because you know who I'm going to ring with? This yeah, guy. And we're going to knock down those doors. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's just really kind of alarming when you, you know, you look at um, what's happening with all this. It just kind of scares me. You know, for the future, I feel like we kind of have a dystopic nightmare that we're heading mm -hmm. towards because when you go to a drag show that's not even uh, labeled to kids like you went to, mm -hmm. people don't realize this, guys. One of Sarah's most viral things, I mean, it was a kid-friendly drag show, but kids are at every drag show. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be kid-friendly, so that's why it's like, what? I, even though they outlaw it, I'm just kind of like, yeah. uh, I don't have a lot of hope. I don't think that's going to stop it, sadly, because the parents will take their kids to anyone. Mm -hmm. Well, but at least then they'll have some sort of consequences for yeah, it, right? Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. That is good. But trust I mean, me, because then when I attend, not only do I get to film, but then I get to call up the popo <laughs> and be like, hey. Snitch. Snitches I've get got, stitches. Yeah, I've, no, oh, you're... I would dare them. <laughs> uh, I've got someone for you to come pick up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, wasn't that a thing with like the row thing where they said that Texas is gonna allow bounty hunters to like go after people or something? Oh yeah, uh, that was probably that was probably fake news. Uh, I think. Well, that's disappointing. I was gonna say we should expand <laughs> that to include like the drag queen thing, so we yeah, can just have like it, it, privatized. Forces. Well, what separates a bounty hunter from a regular cop is a bounty hunter can only arrest you if you have a felony warrant yes. for your arrest. It has to be a set of standing warrant. Yeah. And if they well, can't let's find make it a felony you. then. I really <laughs> the the whole judicial system. I mean, I respect it obviously, but there is something I don't like about the way we. We've tried to turn justice into an algorithm, which maybe, you know, is better, but I don't know. I do kind of miss the old frontier justice where, you know, oh, you're just doing that and then you just take them outside the and West. deal That's with the problem. Yeah. To Sarah's point, though, and I think this is, this is the conversation we need to start having in this country. Will the legal class now step up and start taking action? Will the lawyers, will the good lawyers, will the real Slim Shady stand up? Will the good <laughs> lawyers stand up and say, okay, we're going to take cases against doctors that are forcing parents behind closed doors because there's precedent now. That's coercion. Right. They can go to court. So, so let's see if the medical class will not defend children. Will the, will the judicial and, and, and you know, the legal class, will they stand up and, and defend children? To your point, there's now drag shows where they simulate sex with children even when children are not in the audience yeah. by coercing the adults to say this should be normal. You know, taking sexual deviancy, taking the pedophile that's, you know, licking his chops, going, yeah, you know what? I should go. I haven't done it before. Maybe paid for adult prostitutes, but I should go buy a child. And so it's, it's just permeating the, that whole culture, you know. And so it's, it's demonic um, and should be dealt with that way. Well, well and I got to say this as a sex trafficking, I mean, you're a real sex trafficking expert, but because all sex trafficking is illegal, it's the same to traffic an underage person basically as an adult. Almost the same. It's both illegal. So that's why they usually do children because they're easier victims to traffic. Mm -hmm. It's interesting yeah. you bring up the uh, Texas State Capitol. I spent some time there a few weeks ago, and the guy I was with was pointing at all of the people who are representing Texas, and then he was saying, oh, yeah, that person had an affair with that person walking mm. by, and then this person and that person are swingers with these people. All these, like, terrible people. Mm. And you can actually pretty easily bully them into passing these types of bills mm -hmm. because the reason we've lost so much ground is because the left bullies them, Correct. and their stupid politician brain is like, oh, no, this means I'm not going to win an election. Yep. You can bully them to voting for the right things. And I don't think that, you know, obviously blackmail is wrong. You don't want to do anything like that. Positive but affirmation. <laughs> as long as you don't <laughs> lie, yeah. because, you know, yeah need to and also you shouldn't lie and as long as you don't do anything illegal because you know you don't want to go to jail everything's fair game yeah. and that's like what the left well the left even gets a little more creative but that's like totally mm -hmm. fine I had dinner last night with this guy who was telling me about some of the things he's done you know he'll go to dinner with somebody who's thinking about running and total like rhino neocon guy and he'll tell them that he has information on his opponent that uh, you know he should look into and he'll just slide him an envelope and then the guy's looking through and all of a sudden it's like Ashley Madison chat logs you know evidence of him having homosexual affairs things like that and he's just like I think you should really think about what your family's going to go through if you decide to, you know, run for public office. And then all of a sudden, like, the guy doesn't run anymore. We need to do that, but, like, with all of these people. That'd be really cool. Well, I, you bring up a great point about the left constantly just bullying them. And, and I mean, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? So mm -hmm. they've, they're this tiny fraction of society when you're talking about the LGBTQ community, which for some reason seems to be, like, the only special interest group that wants to groom children and uh, excuse pedophilia. So that's the organization. Yeah. And that's the special interest group ACLU. that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. They're like they're just such a tiny fraction. Mm -hmm. But these politicians have gotten so scared to be called like a bigot or homophobic or mm -hmm. transphobic. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Oh, man. Because they I was, show up for I was, Sarah. They, because ACLU, they do. they'll show up 500 and the conservatives show up 12. Okay, okay. That's a, so I was talking to a representative. I don't know if he wants to be named, so I'm not going to name him, but a, a state legislator here in Texas. And um, he has proposed some bills that will help protect children. And he said, I'm just telling you, when this goes to committee, I really need your help getting people to show up yes. because all of the blue-haired crazy freaks show up. up because they already live in freaking Austin. Right? They probably live like on the They're under probably, the bridge, like right there. It's also their right? religion. It's yeah. all they have I know, to do. I know. They They're not else. working. They're re so they all show up in droves, and they're mm -hmm. the only ones who show up, and they they fill all of the seats. Yep. And then these legislators with no balls, as John pointed out, yep. what are they going to do? Vote for their convictions rather than what all of these people are screaming at them to do? No, they they don't they don't have convictions. They're just going to vote for whatever these people are screaming in their faces to tell them to do. The, the left is the best like paid activism, whatever scam mm -hmm. going on. Where not everybody obviously that's protesting is paid, but they're the best at rallying people to you know join their cause and you know just have to pay a few of the ringleaders. That's one of the most frustrating things. Whenever they're rioting and people on our side are like laughing at them, they are so sophisticated. Organized, brother. Yeah. They already. Yeah. Have have bail money raised. Yep. They've yes. got yeah. activist yes. lawyers ready. Yes. They've got yeah. like their opsec Remember pretty well the, down. all the bricks that were dropped off yeah. at strategic That's locations? No, so no, stop no, it. And then like our not. guys are like, we're going to show up and we're going to put on a tricorn hat and sing God Save America. And it's like, <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, I know, I know. It's, uh, well, it's but, really sad to see. We got to But John, I was just real quick, but if we do plan, then they throw you in jail for January 6th, so it's kind of tough. That's yeah. actually true. That Fair. is a good point. Fair. Um, all right, when we come back, let's talk about uh, red states fighting back against uh, the federal government infringing on your Second Amendment rights. We'll be right back. You guys want another red pill on smoking cigarettes? It's actually good for you. No, it's not. No, hear me out. Well, there are like 90-year-old women. I always... All right, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton and Gun Owners of America have filed a lawsuit against the ATF. Now, this lawsuit is going to challenge the Biden pistol brace ban. A uh, pistol brace, for those of you who don't know, is an attachment for a pistol that assists the user in firing the weapon. Under the ATF final rule, any pistol brace that can be used as a stock redefines the pistols as an SBR. Um, and so Ken Paxton, Gun Owners of America, are challenging this. They have filed against the ATF. Um, and the, by the way, this actually just took place uh, January 31st was when the new rule uh, took effect. So you're going to have to register or destroy uh, all of you out there who own any of these pistol braces, which is like 40 million people, 40 million mm -hmm. lawfully owned brace firearms. You're going to have to register them or destroy them within 120 days or face possible felony charge. He is not the only one, Ken Paxton, who is acting on this. Republican Montana Governor Greg uh, Gianforte sent a letter to U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland saying that Montana will not enforce the ATF final rule for pistol braces. Several sheriff's departments in Oklahoma are also refuting to, refusing to abide by this pistol brace ban. Uh, Obviously erodes on the Second Amendment. It'll be interesting to see um, what the how the federal government responds to this. Yeah, and, and really no difference than how they come after kids in school. It, you chip away. You take the victory that you can get, mm -hmm. and over time you chip away at the iceberg. Mm -hmm. And so if they can't just eradicate, look, they tested us with Beto, and saying I'm going to buy back your AR-15s or 13s according to the president, right? That doesn't work. Resistance then. Go after a brace, reduce the number of you know ammunition in the magazine. The magazine yeah. Chip away, chip away, and so don't give an inch. Yep. Ken Paxton, don't give an inch. You know Sean Ray has in Utah, the AG there. Don't give an inch. You know Todd Rakita. These guys are all the AGs that are fighting against this because. You blink, and 20 years later, you have no guns. You don't have a Second Amendment. So mm -hmm. the answer is no. Yeah. Yeah, it's a frog boiling in water. You know, they take your bump stocks, they take your pistol braces, and it's like, what? And then I don't even have a gun. I don't even have bullets anymore. So, yeah, it's just, uh, like you said, it's a very slow encroachment to where you have, you know, nothing mm -hmm. left. My tinfoil hat on this would be, I think they're trying to take away everything that would compel an American to enjoy being an American. <laughs> like, seriously, like, what are we fighting for? If I can't have, like... Like an muscle cars? I was yeah. about to say exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, like, getting drafted to go fight Russia, and I'm like, I can't even own a muscle car or an MP5. Like, what are we doing here? Like, obviously, there's more to being an American than that. 
but in a much more real sense, they've kind of stripped that away already. So all I have are things I can buy now because everything else has been like destroyed. And now even you can't have that anymore. So it's very disappointing. Um, I want to get to this other story. So uh, the House passed a resolution blocking a bill that allows illegal immigrants to vote in local elections within Washington, D.C. So um, in October 2022, the Council of the District of Columbia passed this D.C. Act, uh, Council's Local Resident Voting Rights Amendment Act, which gave legal non-citizens and illegal immigrants voting rights in the nation's capital. And D.C. City Council transmitted the bill to Congress on January 11th, 2023. Um, Chip Roy, uh, Ted Cruz were, you know, very instrumental in trying to prevent this bill from being enacted. But it's just fascinating because they, you know, call Tucker Carlson a white supremacist and they say like, oh, you guys are just... You're, that's a, just the great replacement theory and you guys are just racist and that's not true, that's not happening. And meanwhile, they're literally doing all of these things right under your nose. Um, they do want illegal immigrants to vote. That, that's why they continue allowing them in. It, I, it, it really is, I mean, there are a lot of other parts of it, but that part anyway, it really is that simple. Yeah, and, and you know, something that really bothers me as an immigrant, as a legal mm -hmm. immigrant who had to write an exam that most Americans would fail, I had to understand branches of government, our history. I had to, I had to actually take an English verbal test, mm -hmm. okay, and a written English test. None of that's happening. And why is that important? Because I had to assimilate to become an American. To your point, burgers, muscle cars, the American way, the flag, the Constitution. None of those questions or requirements are put mm -hmm. on any immigrant that's currently coming into this country. They don't want to be Americans, but right. they do want them to vote right. because they'll never vote pro-America. Right. They will vote whatever culture they come from or whatever they're told to vote. Yeah, it's just fascinating because they're always like, oh, they're just coming here in search of a better life. And I'm sure some of them are. But uh, if that were really the case, we wouldn't have these New York hotels where these illegal immigrants are being placed just overrun. There's food rotting in the hallways. There's people having sex everywhere. I mean, it is it's like a third world country there because they don't want to be like you. They still want to be like their own culture. Right. They just want to drain your resources. Yeah, I mean, I think yes. we should just let them vote. Why not? I mean, what does it even matter at this point? I mean, I really don't even trust have very much integrity in our elections. But, uh, I mean, seriously, the, the, if people can't see, you know, what this, this replacement theory, you know, it's a conspiracy. But it's just so obvious when we care more about the border between Russia and Ukraine than the border between Texas and Mexico. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at all our resources. So it's very obvious that this is done purposefully or on purpose, excuse me. And uh, I don't know if it's ever going to stop. Maybe we get a conservative DeSantis or Trump in there. But even them, even Trump didn't necessarily build the wall. So. Well, he couldn't. He didn't yeah, I have, know. I which, is, but... which is why I, uh, but that's why I, I had a problem hope. with his promise because yeah. it's like yes. you're, you're, you're yes. making a promise that you cannot yes. unilaterally deliver. He you need Congress done that. to do it. I mean, that should have been the main focus. But still, but still, if you go there and please come They can me. get under it. I know. No, no I know, it's not under. No, the gates over. are open, bro. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, oh, and, that, and that's the thing. It's I'm like Texas National Guard comes and closes the gates, closes the. Oh, I know. And they literally, Border Patrol comes and opens it back up. But think about it this way Trump built, so let's say he built a wall and you can't physically build a wall but let's say you build a wall okay four years from now the second you swing presidency to the left they open the it up, policy right. yeah. is what defends the wall right. yeah right. i understand that right. i understand yeah. that's more right. important I, it's just more like the the symbology of it because now everybody feels in south america that they can come here and it's why oh, i mean we have border patrol they're just welcoming them in and yeah. shaking their hand and letting it's them our come own in. ngos that oh, are enticing them to come 100 percent. no i yeah. agree yeah john I got into a little bit of trouble recently on Twitter for my take on immigration, but I don't know. <laughs> this is like the take that I feel you? like anybody at any point in history would have had on their country. What was the take, John? The take mm -hmm. is basically this. I am sick of being told by the left that everything that my ancestors sweat and bled to build is up for grabs equally to anybody in the world. Yeah. And mm -hmm. my country is the only country that has to just be, well, your country's for everybody, obviously. And it's like, well, no, it's not. You know, I take a very traditional standpoint. This is what the Founding Fathers wrote in the Constitution before they even get to the, the Articles. 
This is for ourselves and our posterity, meaning our descendants. I would love immigrants to come here like Yaakov, for example, but they are an accessory to America. Mm -hmm. They are not America. We are Which settlers. is why I have to become are, American. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just find that like deeply offensive and I'm very sick of seeing, you know, there's this whole class of influencers now. These people come from like Asia, for example, and they'll mm -hmm. come over and they'll be, oh, I'm like a capitalist. I'm like an entrepreneur. I value American ideas such as excellence and meritocracy. And what that translates to is them lobbying and trying to normalize this idea of opening up immigration so that we have all these millions of people coming in from China, from India, because we're just starving to death over here. We don't even know how to run the technology that we invented. So we need all these enlightened people over there to help us. And it's like, no, we don't. We are excellent. We are America. We built the modern world. We don't need millions of people coming in to save us from suffocating to death on ourselves. Like, we can do it just fine. The problem is we have systems put in place in this country to disenfranchise all the people who could be doing that in favor of all the people who are going to come over or all the people who are just not themselves capable of doing so. So, well, yeah. I just want to make this quick point. Immigration isn't bad, but it's globalism. They want America to lose our identity, right. so we don't even have one. We're right. just this multicultural blob. That's right. That's right. Well, and I mean... Im immigration in itself isn't bad, but yeah. like illegal immigration. Is a just, legal immigration, yeah. but also B, I, uh, you you can't just have anyone in your country. But you know, yeah. a qualifying yeah. mechanism. Contribute. Qualifying mechanism of immigration is I had to prove how I was going to contribute. Right, to that's what I'm saying. Society. You have to be able to contribute. And, and my visa initially coming over was a, a visa where I, I had to prove exceptional quality. Mm -hmm. You go look mm -hmm. at the, the the definition of an O1 O2 visa. You have had to be in articles internationally. You've had to be cited as an expert in your field. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Bring the doctor that right. can come perform a surgery right. that yeah, that can train other doctors. That can contribute that's not even a conversation right. at the moment. Right, right. Make America better. Yes. Right. Well, employ in, Americans. Assimilate. Yeah. I yeah. know I said a dirty word there, but it's true. But yeah. even this, there's college students that came here on a college visa, and they're revoking those like crazy. Yeah. But you can just come across the border, yes. no big right. deal. So people came here, they went to TCU. They or did SCU. come legally. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah. they came legally, they spent $150,000 on a college education, bye-bye. But if you come here with a child tra sex trafficker, you're fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we got to take a break. We'll be back. A Texas man, upset with the way power outages were handled following a storm last week, attended a city council meeting in Austin uh, yesterday dressed as a clown, claiming he was suited for the job of Austin Energy CEO. Let's watch some of that. My mother told me to dress for the job that you want to have. And that is why I'm here today, because I would like to be the CEO of Austin Energy. <laughs> we need leaders who are aligned with our priorities. And right now, our number one priority is fighting climate change. We need to get to net zero by, 20, by 2030. And honestly, if we are ever going to achieve these goals, you shouldn't even be using power at all. OK, <laughs> listen, just last month, I destroyed the gas stove that I owned in a fire that I started because I am firmly committed to saving the planet, just like you. And I'm sure it will come as no shock to anyone that Alex Stein knows him. He's my protege. He's one of my protégés. I have many protégés. Uh, this is Alex Stranger, friend of mine. Like I said, uh, you know, he started seeing my videos. I met him at a comedy, comedy show, and uh, he started doing this. And he's had some viral hits, but I think this is his biggest one. And this is what makes it go viral, is the fact that the Austin CBS or ABC, I forget which one, Blue Checkmark shared it, you know, organically. Like, crazy guy makes fun of the yeah. you know, Austin thing, and then all the news outlets, and now he's on the news and why. So congratulations, Alex. Keep it up. Yeah, um, it, there really is, people think showing up at city council meetings don't do anything, but when you do it like uh, Alex over here and the other Alex, you're so weird. We are weird. I just trying to show you how weird we are. No, I think it is. No, it does matter. This is the one thing, and I don't say it like, oh, I'm virtue signaling. We should go up there and mock a lot of these people. I mean, there's, you should go speak seriously, too. I, I, I definitely encourage people. But just speak. Speak up for yourself. Nobody else is going to speak up for you. Um, I, to knowing, knowing Sarah and, and me reading human beings for a living, I will tell you, that was one of the most endearing comments in a very kind way. That you're so weird. <laughs> that was layered, brother. Yeah, I layered to. I love him. He's like my I little know. brother. But I know. There was. <laughs> it's part of your unusual. charm, Alex. <laughs> but to, just to make the. God, Lee, I'm not sure if I'm going to hold out. Um, just to like kind of make go to the serious part of this, there was like over 348,000 residents that were affected by this storm. Yeah. So yeah. it was not little. Yeah. 
No, it's bad. I and mean, there's no reason for it. Right. We're yeah. Texas. Right. We produce power. Well, and okay. I mean, what's been done since, what was it, 2020? Yeah. 2020? With, a, with a beautiful, complete blackout. Right. Yeah, yeah. What, but what it never happened in my other then? 30 years of living. 29. Uh, it doesn't matter about my age. I'm just saying it never happened till 2020. Till because we had you didn't have a governor that made a bad yeah. deal back then. Yeah. Right. Right. And but don't worry. Once we have all windmills <laughs> to run all of our energy, it'll be no fine. bald eagles. All the bald eagles will be yeah. dead. Yeah. Bird graveyard. Uh, That's what I, 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 you know, I'm going to sound like an idiot. No, go ahead. I yeah. like. I don't know. I think it's almost unfair to clowns. They're highly competent. They're trained. They can juggle. They can do magic. They're entertaining. They have to uh, go to college. Yeah. Like the clown I mean, college. Like clowns have. do their job very well. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of a forgotten art form. But I mean, this guy clearly couldn't. But I get it. It's clever. So I liked it. I want him to show up. Will he show up? Can he go to the Capitol? He's been to Plano. Oh, you're talking he, about D.C. or in Texas? No. In, yeah, in he's been, he has videos. Go check out Alex's uh, uh, Instagram. I think it's Showtime Alex Stringer. He, he's going out and he's confronted politicians. He's doing the Alex Stein primetime bit, and I love it. I give him full carte blanche. It's well, that's like what I'm saying. when Gallagher sold his, Gallagher, the guy that smashed the fruit, he sold his bit to his twin brother. He's kind of like the Alex. He's my twin brother. Well, that's what I'm saying. If he lives in Austin, he should be walking down, up and down, up and yeah, down the halls of the Capitol will. all the time, dressed like that. Have We're you talking about met all, these, Alex? all these blue, no, all these oh. blue-haired activists that are showing up in all these committee meetings? Bring him in there in we that stupid clown costume. We need a million Alex costume. Steins. We need like yes. people to mm -hmm. fear this. You run like billboard campaigns like, we are your janitors, we cook your meals, we make your coffee, <laughs> expect us. That's like at any given time. Right. That's literally Fight yeah. Club, but yeah. yes. <laughs> no, John, I'm there with you. I, I was speaking in Frisco last night because we've got really, really bad things happening in Frisco. It's really bad. And we and I was told there's going to be a riot. It ended up not being a riot, but I was speaking to a bunch of politicians and a bunch of parents on what's happening in schools, etc. And I'm standing there because last week I spoke in Indiana and the ACLU showed up to protest me and it was 580 ACLU members, Jeez. right? And wow. last night I'm sitting in a room in a city where sex trafficking is out of control, Frisco. The highest fentanyl deaths in all of Texas is Frisco. And I'm thankful for the 100 that showed up, but there's 100, 120 show up. And I'm standing there going, it's always the case. It's time to take this country back by number and maybe by force. You got to show up actually physically show up, let the fear of God descend upon Austin Capitol, let them run, tuck their tails and run again by saying, we're in every corner, we're coming for you. We're hunting you like hogs. We're coming. We're going to stand outside your car in the parking lot because it's a public parking lot. You're going <laughs> to see us. We are the janitors, the teachers, the parents. You can't turn without seeing us because the 0.4% who's the tail mm -hmm. is wagging the dog in this country. And yeah. I'm absolutely sick of it. I love this. All right. I totally agree. We're going to make America great again. We're going to go to the Capitol. You heard it here first. We're going to the Capitol. We're hunting them like hogs. That was oh, a no, joke. That was we're not work. doing that. That was, was a joke. That's that satire. Was joke. That was a joke. Yes. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, um, there's a big, fiery debate going on. And I want to get your takes on it. We'll be right back. The hashtag uh, Disney adult is uh, apparently going viral. It's gained over 1.2 billion views on TikTok alone. So here's the debate, guys. Is it okay, is it appropriate for an adult or an adult couple with no children, none, to attend Disney theme parks? And I would say, is it okay for, this is some influencer here who posted her TikTok of her just like breaking down. She was just so excited to go to Disney. She's got the ears, which is weird. She's got a bunch of buttons. She's dressed like a kid and she is like freaking out, crying because she's at a theme park that is designed for young children. Yeah, this is That's supposed weird. to be like some magical moment. This is like a grown woman. Yes, it's embarrassing. There is so much of this in our culture because we have this like delayed maturation where adults 100%. are, you know, buying kids toys and playing with Legos and yeah. doing all this like comic book stuff, which I understand that that can mature, but the ones that are specifically curated to kids, it's like this new thing. Mm -hmm. Generations didn't used to do that. They would grow up, move on, take on new interests and hobbies, and you know, millennials and younger, and even a little bit of Gen X, they're not doing that. They're yeah. like staying children it's very weird i have to counter signal a little but i just start off by being a little weird people over 30 i believe buy like 65 percent of the children's toys or at least action figures like Ew, yeah that's yeah. weird yeah, then listen to this this is weird so i'm friends yeah, 30 and, seconds okay real quick so i'm friends with these geeks and gamers crew that yeah. they go they go and review a lot of these theme parks yeah. 
It's all adults. It's literally all adults. I mean, there's families with their kids, but literally these theme parks, when you watch the videos and go, it's all freaking adults. And things. we're mad because we yeah. have to wait in line yeah. for our kids to enjoy this ride because they're a bunch of adults. Yeah. 68% of millennials and Gen Z are still of the parents paying their bills. Yeah. That's why we're at where we're at. Guys, thank you. Thank you.